Good morning and welcome to Weekends with Whitney. Coming up on this morning's show. He's one of the best baritones in music. Looking for love, all the wrong places. Looking for love, too many faces. His love for music has put him on stage with some of the world's best performers. But his other world is all about serving and protecting. How Clifton Brown shifts gears between blue lights and the spotlight. Plus, meet the man who did some of the final chemistry on the hydrogen bomb and how he changed history. Then Dr. Nick shares five ways to read people better, whether you've known them an hour or a lifetime. But we begin with a man following his two passions. Both put him on the road, one on a motorcycle, the other on stage. I'm much too young to feel this damn off. But all my cards are on the table with no haste left in the hall. I'm much too young to feel this damn off. Lord, Clifton Brown has the deep, rich, baritone voice country music stars are made of. He shared the stage and toured with many of them, like Ronnie Millsap. Oh, what a difference you've made in my life. Merle Haggard. We make it Tracy Lawrence. Mark Chestnut. Diamond Rio. One more day. One more time. One more sunset, baby. Restless Heart. And no, I still be loving, I still be loving you. And Brad Paisley. And she's everything I ever want, everything I need. Ironically, Clifton was almost everything Brad Paisley is. Arista Records was looking for its next big star, and it came down to the wire. Clifton or Brad? This is real. This is your life. So I've learned over the years it takes the right look at the right time. And when I went to Nashville in 1999, <laughs> At the time, Arista Records had called me up. They were looking for a guy who wore a starch shirt, who wore the tight blue jeans, who wore the, the, the cowboy hat. Cowboy hat. Well, Arista Records was looking for that guy to fit their traditional country avenue. And at the same time, there was a guy in town named Brad Paisley <laughs> who signed with Arista Records. And, um, wow. But you know what? The guy's phenomenal. At least you lost out to one of the best. What? I think sometimes just catching that break, you know. And every time I walk on stage, I give it 110%. I know you do. And that's all you can do, you know, and just hope that one day there's the right person listening to you. Clifton's been listening and playing country music since childhood. When I was growing up, of course, in my house, it was Conway Twitty, George Jones, and Merle Haggard. If you listen to anything else, you got, you got a whipping. So uh, I grew up listening to um, or watching like the Grand Ole Opry, and watching some of the shows on TV. And they used to have this, this deal sitting around where all these people would sit around. All of these great entertainers would just sit around with a guitar, and they all sing together. Now, he's doing that. In addition to touring with big stars, he's often invited to play in their inner circle, like this night with Grammy winners Richie McDonald. Billy Dean. I'd head west to our neighborhood. And they'd say, here comes young Billy. 
and is up to no good. And Larry Stewart. He was born and raised in Denham, played football, was a volunteer fireman, and had his own restaurant, The Rusty Bucket. His band, by the same name, played there often. A decade later, a friend on the police force stopped by. He said, man, you need to come ride with me one night, you know, and I did, and I just got the urge for it, and uh, I came and joined the reserve program here. I did it for about nine months, and they were hiring, and I was like, well, I'm selling my business, so why not? Soon he was part of the motorcycle division and quickly became one of the best. You're simply the best. Better than all the rest. If you had an opportunity to be a police officer, it is the best job. Best because it changes and saves lives. Uh, my wife and I was at the local Walmart shopping. And as I got up to the register, I noticed the young lady behind the counter started crying. And I said, Is it, are you okay? And she said, you don't know who I am, do you? And I said, no ma'am, I don't. She said, you're the guy that brought me home that night. And my dad gave me another chance, and I've got all four of my kids back, and I'm off drugs, and it's all because of you. And to me, that was worth any paycheck that I could ever get. Wow. Just, you know, you change one person's life, it means a lot. Corporal Brown is changing the lives of children at St. Jude Hospital, too. He and other motorcycle officers from across the U.S. and Canada hold an annual competition. They've raised $800,000 for the Dream Day Foundation. You know, when you hear these kids' stories, mm. that they're perfectly normal children, and all of a sudden, just in the blink of an eye, they've got cancer, and they're going to St. Jude's, and they're fighting for their life. And then what little bit of stuff we do helps them. And it's like, I, I sit there and just boo-hoo and... He's using his other big talent to help too. The first song on his upcoming new album is The Halls of St. Jude. He first played it for fans just this week. With some help from you and me, I saw an angel in the halls of St. Jude. It's one of those songs that grabs you from the first line of the song mm. and doesn't let go. You know, like you don't want the song to end. And, it, and when it, when your song finally ends, if, if you don't have a tear in your eye, well, there's not a cow in Texas. It's the type of country he's bringing back. Well, it just, it seems like the steel guitars and the fiddles are kind of just fading out and start, they're starting to get more of a rock feel in country. These songs uh, today are just, they all sound like they're just rhyming words, you know, they really don't have a meaning like like some of the songs that, you know, back in the day. Can you make folks feel what you feel inside? If you big star down, let me warn you, it's a long, hard ride. There's going to be so many new songs that are on this album. You know, being a big George Strait fan and, you know, growing up, in that era of country music when it was just clean and just the songs were messages. Mm -hmm. I've been real selective on my songs. These songs are gonna be good. His new album might skyrocket him to stardom, but it's not fame he's chasing. Hey, do you happen to know just the one of Hank Williams' song? Can't you see I'm a dime? Despite losing that big break with Arista Records, he wouldn't change a thing. To be able to do something that you love to do, or actually two jobs that I love to do, and get paid for both. Riding a motorcycle or singing, whatever I gotta do, I just, I love helping people. Whether under the spotlight or running blue lights, he's enjoying one heck of a ride. Just a good old boy, 
never meaning no harm Beats all you never saw Been in trouble with the law since the day they was born if you'd like to see Clifton play in person, you can catch him playing somewhere across South Louisiana almost every week out of the year. If you'd like to know exactly where, you can follow the band's Facebook page. It's Clifton Brown and the Rusty Bucket Band. And they're also part of the huge Cajun Country Jam coming up at the Lamar Dixon Expo Center July 1st and 2nd. Now they're gonna be playing alongside some really big stars like Clay Walker, Rockin' Doopsie, and Joe Diffie, among a lot of others. And still to come on Weekends with Whitney. I sit down with the man who did the final chemistry on the hydrogen bomb. What brought him to Baton Rouge 35 years ago? And how his work helped the U.S. rocket into space. Then Dr. Nick gives us five tools to help read people better as Weekends with Whitney continues. Maggio, the only way to go. Maggio Buick GMC, your satisfaction's our specialty. We really deliver on Fault River here in New Roads. Small town atmosphere, legendary service for over 60 years. Maggio, the only way to go. The only way to go, that's Maggio. Go Roof is proud to serve the Baton Rouge and surrounding areas with our years of experience and quality service. We want more than just your roofing needs. Go Roof cares about the client and wants you to be our customer for life. Roof replacement, repair, vents, and more. Go Roof will get it done. We have excellent standing relationships with all the top insurance companies, so making your claim is fast and easy. A beautiful roof every single time at Go Roof. Call now for a free estimate. In a world filled with TV and video games, children are losing their thirst for learning and adventure. On February 27th, that all changes. Summer camp is back, and Breck is the place to be. Recreation, theater, animals, nature, art. At Breck, adventure is just around the corner. Register for Breck Summer Camp February 27th at breck.org and give your child a summer they will never forget. This segment brought to you by all of our friends at St. James Place. Welcome back to Weekends with Whitney. Proof this morning that you never know what incredible things someone right down the street or even next door may have done. Herbert Knight is one of those people. He played a big role in the making of the hydrogen bomb and he helped the U.S. rocket into outer space. Herbert Knight is unassuming and gentle, unlike the explosive nature of his life's work, hydrogen bombs and nuclear rocket engines. His childhood was quite opposite of that too. He grew up in peaceful Maine on the tranquil grounds of his family's dairy farm. His father urged him to drink up education. He was all for it. He didn't want me to to uh, milk cows for a living. <laughs> Herbert went to Harvard and got his PhD in physical chemistry. High temperature chemistry, and we studied uh, explosions, detonations, to, to get things hot enough and high enough temperature to find out what, we hope, find out what was going on. Dr. Knight exploded onto the job market in Los Alamos, New Mexico in 1951. There, classified work was underway on the design of nuclear weapons. Dr. Knight worked on the final chemistry in the making of the hydrogen bomb. It would prove to be thousands of times more powerful than the atomic bombs used a decade earlier in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The hydrogen or H-bomb as it's called was also much more difficult to create and more powerful than anyone expected. The very first a uh, thermonuclear explosion in the history of mankind it was conducted in the Pacific in the late 50s. It was a thing called Mike Shot, a little bitty island in the Pacific, uh, about a mile across. And uh, when uh, Norris Bradbury, who was the uh, 
lab director at the time, came in to talk to all us staff members eagerly awaiting news. He's smiling and he says, gentlemen, we have a new deep water entrance to, to uh, Anahuitoc Atoll. The island just turned into a crater. As terrifying as that was, Dr. Knight says the H-bomb produced peace. When the nuclear weapon appeared, war ceased, a serious big time wars. And uh, we used to have one every 20 years, and now it's been, uh, what, 80 since we, had, since we had a really, really big war. His work was top secret at Los Alamos at the time, and despite the complexity of their creations, simplicity sometimes surprised him. I once held a uh, 10 kiloton bomb in my arms oh. because we were in a little uh, bunker kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and our job was to connect those cables and uh, we had to move it around on a bench. I mean, just like having it on a kitchen table. <laughs> oh my. I mean, it's, it's just a 60 pound weight or whatever it was, I don't know. But uh, seems kind of unbelievable, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It <laughs> and does. here I am. I know. 91 you live, years old. Live to tell. <laughs> Dr. Knight also worked on a nuclear power rocket engine. Its plan was to shoot the U.S. space program into a new stratosphere that Russia couldn't touch. Well, the idea was to uh, develop a, a nuclear-based rocket engine. And the reason being... Uh, Chemical rockets are very powerful, but they gobble up fuel at an extraordinary rate. And, uh, and six or ten minutes is about as long as you can get those engines to burn because you run out of fuel so fast. But uh, the nuclear rocket offered the opportunity to uh, have an engine that would run for uh, uh, days and maybe even months. It was nuclear energy that then brought him to Baton Rouge to work for Exxon in 1980. They wanted to broaden their base and instead of just being oil company, maybe we ought to have our fingers in some other pies, which as a, a corporate management decision is probably pretty smart. Mm. And uh, they established a subsidiary called Exxon Nuclear. Even for someone as bright as Dr. Knight, the explosion of physics since he was in school is mind boggling. Uh, aspiring young uh, high school student and you like science, uh, just to get to where we are now is a, a monumental task compared to the one that I had because there's so much more knowledge accumulated. And, and how the educators manage that, I, I, I ponder sometimes. It's uh, obviously, he, even the brightest kids can only absorb so much so fast. And yet there's so, <clears throat> so much more to absorb. With all the advancements, with all we know now, I asked Dr. Knight how safe he felt in this day and age. Will we blow ourselves up one day? No. 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 And we may be we may be smacked by a, an asteroid the size of a size of a Mack truck that and that might do it, but <laughs> I don't think we'll do it ourselves. <laughs> one man's opinion. Not bad for a guy who grew up on a dairy farm and then grew our knowledge of chemistry and science. And still to come on Weekends with Whitney. Ever wonder what someone is really like? Dr. Nick shares some invaluable tools for finding out as Weekends with Whitney continues. How can you afford the best retirement ever? In three words, St. James Place. It's easier to plan for your future when you know what your future costs may be. The surprisingly affordable life care benefit at St. James Place provides for the quality amenities and services you want, as well as the assurance of help whenever you need it, all for one predictable monthly fee. Count on the best retirement ever at St. James Place and live life well. Buying or selling a home can be stressful and exhausting, unless you choose me. I'm Regina Roselle with KDK Realty. Don't just trust your largest asset to anyone. Go with success. I've sold hundreds of homes over the last 10 years, and I can get you top dollar for your home, as well as get you the best price on your new one. Email me at buywithregina at gmail.com. I'll do all the work. All you have to do is pack. Let's get moving together. Atlas Foundation Repair. 
fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. Do you ever wish that you could read people better, that you knew more about them, really when you meet them? Dr. Nick joins us this morning with some tools to read people better. Great to see good you. Good morning. Good morning. And a very good topic. Yes, right. Because, a very good topic. you know, sometimes maybe there's um, someone that you work with or someone who is a friend of your child's or you know someone a little bit, but you think, I want to get to know them get better. To know them better. But maybe to do that, you have to be able to, to read them. To read them. And what about, you know, if we're interviewing somebody for a job? Right. I mean, that's, we, we need to be able to read them. And it's not a manipulative read. It's just, let me get to know how they are in natural Sure. Natural settings. And it may just be a job like babysitting your children or, sure. you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, total workplace. Right. What would you, what would you say one of the first things is we need to do? Well, I've been reading up on this ever since you said this would be a good topic. And uh, interestingly enough, one of the top uh, suggestions is to take them to dinner or to lunch, to a restaurant, and watch not so much for manners, and, and although I think that's important too, sure. but it's to watch how they interact with the waiter and with other people, and how they handle if things aren't the way they're supposed to be. Because sure. you're, che you're, you're checking frustration level. Are you able to have a good time? How do you handle conflict? How do you handle conflict? Disappointment. And, and again, think about that in terms of someone working. See how they work that restaurant and how they're doing in, in that kind of a setting. I like to also say, Whitney, on top of that, that, that I didn't read much about, but I truly believe it. And that is to socialize with them. Okay. It's, it's, you, it's so you it's a thing. group instead of one on one. That's interesting. Absolutely, you and I have a relationship one on one, but there's a different dynamic when there are five or six people or even more people, oh, certainly. you know that. And so you're watching to see how they interact with other people and how they interact with you. I've had people say to me, gosh, my wife certainly is different when she's around a crowd. Oh. And, it's, it, then, and then you're able to kind of look at it and maybe even confront it in a good way and say, well, what's the difference? You know, what, what is it that I'm not offering? Right. You can learn a lot and grow from it. What are, when you're in that group setting, what are some important positives to look for? And are there any red flags? Well, the red flags would be, I think, to see what kind of, uh, if there's sarcasm, if there's what I call pontificating, people wanting to, you know, rule the show. Be smarter than everybody else. Be smarter else. than anybody else. Focus primarily on them and, and not show interest in other people's. Okay. I, people, I'm always fascinated with watching the dynamic to see who is asking, tell me about yourself, or tell me how, how are you doing? Because some people really, they just want to talk about themselves. Right. And, uh, and I like to nip that in the bud, so I'll shift the subject to, hey, how was your day? You're masterful at or that. Or tell me, tell me more about yourself. And it, it, it moves it away from that person and even helps that person realize there are other people in the room. Yeah, I've you know. been monopolizing this whole thing. Yeah, and there is social anxiety in people, so we need to even encourage that more and more. Yeah, um, so, so the positives out of that would be if they're engaging, they if they're really engaging, listen, they, listening, you know, pay attention, and share the, um, the, the focus of the room. And inclusive, mm -hmm. and especially if there's someone in the room that's not necessarily a part of the group. Great. It's, it really is. Social will tell you a whole lot about a working environment. You yes. know, how do we how do we handle those who are new? Um, the, the and ask how many this was interesting. Ask how many broken bones someone has had. Someone I, I read that. I, and I don't was, know that you necessarily agree with that. Well, I just thought it was an interesting theory because they were saying something about the risk taker. That it's a it's just a, a, a wonderful way of saying are you are you willing to take risks? And and I have to tell you, I don't I had one broken bone. <laughs> I was playing volleyball, so I guess, where, where would I chart on the risk taking? I think you've had a few falls I've probably had in your day. a few falls, a few broken bones, yeah. and yeah, a few accidents. Yeah, that, 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 that was cute. And I also like uh, the, the notion of um, listen to what people say and whether they're being focused on truth or whether they're saying something that they want you to keep secret. Oh, interesting. If, let me, if I'm telling you something that's basically the truth, okay, 
I don't have to worry about it later. Huh? Right. You don't have to worry about what you told me. I don't know. But if, but if we're having a conversation and, and I keep hearing over and over, but don't tell anybody, but don't, don't tell, tell anybody. anybody. Or don't, don't tell her I said this. Yeah. Don't tell him I yeah, said this. You're, yeah, there, there are two relationships that are probably in trouble. The one that the person doesn't want them to know the truth about how they feel, and then that they want you to keep a secret. Yes. And it's so, you know, you're talking about reading. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that you're reading, when you read that, it's like, it's the credibility. Mm hmm it's the credibility. What can I believe? But see, this is a fascinating topic. What about setting good boundaries with people and saying, you know, I'd really rather not talk about that, or I'm focused on this right now. I'll get back with you on that. And I think when people do that, you, don't you, doesn't, your, doesn't your respect rise a little bit mm -hmm. instead of... I wanted to go back just briefly, real quickly, to um, the person who always says, oh, but don't tell anybody. But don't. It, is there a point that we should just say, I can't be responsible for keeping your secrets. I, mean, I, th I think that's a great answer. Okay. And or or look, don't tell me if you don't want me to tell anybody. Yeah, I got to because mouth. that because <laughs> well, and because I just don't want to work that hard. Yeah. I don't want to have to remember what can I say and what I can't say. Right. Well, listen. Thanks so much for the tools to helping us read people better. Much more weekends with Whitney right after this. The new year is a perfect time to make your money work hard for you. Hi, I'm Ian James, financial advisor and president of Capital Financial Group. Like millions of Americans, you're likely paying higher taxes and higher fees than you probably should. With 20 years of industry experience, I have a proven plan to analyze your investments and reduce hidden costs and fees. You work hard for your money. It's time to let your money work hard for you. Call me, Ian James, for a free, no obligation portfolio review and a brighter financial future. Classic Hits 103.3, Scott Innes, welcome to the ride home. Put the seatbelts on, hug the babies when you get there. Hey Scott, coffee, water, or trash need emptying? Hey Chris, we're good man, thanks for checking in sure. now. Appreciate it. checking good, in. Sure. Yeah. And by the way, I'm playing Beth just for you today. You too much, I love you. Oh, I, I know you, yeah. No, that's okay, yeah, seriously. Sure. We're, we're good, seriously. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Scott Innes is back on 103.3 Classic Hits. Atlas Foundation Repair, fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. Thanks for joining us for this week's show. If you'd like to see any of the other 76 shows, you can head to my website, weekendswithwhitney.net. You can catch them all there. And we hope to see you back here next week. Until then, we leave you with this.